In the last few days, after weeks of silence, the European Space Agency released something extraordinary. Images of 3i Atlas, captured not from Earth, but from Mars. Two orbiters, ExoMars and Mars Express, turned away from the red planet and pointed toward deep space. And there it was, a blur of light, a ghost against the dark, over 30 million kilometers away. It's hard to explain how unlikely that is. These cameras weren't made for this, they're designed to scan Martian soil, not chase shadows drifting through interstellar space. To see 3i Atlas from there, they had to push past their limits to catch a moving target a hundred thousand times dimmer than anything they were built to detect. And yet, they saw it, a fragment from another system, burning softly as it nears the sun, alive in its coma, a cloud of gas and dust boiling off its ancient ice. This is more than a technical feat, it's a cosmic alignment. This is everything we know so far about 3i Atlas. It was first seen on July 1st, 2025. A small anomaly in the sky, caught by the Atlas survey in Hawaii. Just another moving object, until the calculations started. The trajectory didn't loop. It didn't belong. It wasn't part of the solar system. The numbers made that clear a sharp, hyperbolic arc, the unmistakable signature of something coming from beyond. Not long after, telescopes all over the world began turning toward it. Dozens of teams, dozens of instruments, and what they saw confirmed the suspicion. This was interstellar, 3i Atlas, only the third of its kind, a visitor from the space between stars. Unlike Oumuamua, which never developed a visible coma, and unlike Borisov, which acted like a typical solar system comet, 3i Atlas seemed to fall somewhere in between. At first, it looked dormant, just a point of light. Then something changed. Even before it got close to the sun, 3i Atlas began to glow. Its brightness increased, not by a factor of 1.5 as expected, but by 5. That meant activity. Real, volatile activity. And this wasn't just water vapor. This was something else. Early infrared observations from the James Webb Space Telescope revealed a strange composition. Instead of water being the dominant gas, like in most comets, the coma was rich in carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, gases that sublimate at far lower temperatures. That tells us something important. 3i Atlas came from somewhere cold, somewhere very cold, maybe the edge of a protoplanetary disk around a long dead star, maybe even deeper a primordial cloud, frozen since before our sun was born. That timeline is hard to grasp. Based on its speed and direction, scientists estimate that 3i Atlas could be over 3 billion years older than our solar system. A piece of ancient rock and ice drifting for eons, not following any star, just floating, waiting, until now. And as it drifted closer, its coma expanded. Telescopes like Hubble and Gemini South picked up a tail faint, tear-shaped, stretching behind it. And the more we looked, the stranger it became. Some of the dust wasn't trailing behind. It was being ejected toward the sun. That's rare, unnatural looking even, but not impossible. One explanation is fragmentation. The grains breaking apart, reacting violently to sunlight. Another is a burst of CO2 pressure, enough to launch particles in strange directions. But the strangeness didn't stop there. Gemini South also detected strong emissions of hydrogen cyanide, a chemical signature unmistakably tied to cometary activity, roughly 8 times 10 to the 23rd power molecules per second, even at 3 astronomical units from the Sun. That's active, but low in carbon chains, and that detail matters. Borisov showed the same pattern, rich in certain volatiles, but strangely poor in carbon chain molecules. Now 3i Atlas is showing it too. That may hint at something deeper. A shared origin story. A chemical fingerprint of comets formed far beyond what we know. And then came Mars. ExoMars and Mars Express, both orbiting the red planet, turned their cameras into deep space. Their job wasn't to study comets. They were built to look down at Martian soil. But engineers pushed the limits, recalibrated the optics, and against the odds, they caught it. A tiny point of light, moving slowly, so dim, it was 100,000 times fainter 
than what the cameras were designed for. But it was there, a comet, alive, dust and gas slowly evaporating under solar heat. We could see it, not just from Earth, but from another world. For the first time, humanity was watching an interstellar object from two planets at once, a dual perspective, a cosmic triangulation of something that had traveled across the void, and it was still changing. Spectrographs on the trace gas orbiter detected a coma consistent with ice and dust. Nothing artificial, nothing metallic, just chemistry, just nature, but a nature older than ours and stranger. There's something unsettling about watching an ancient thing awaken. 3i Atlas isn't just drifting anymore. It's active, changing, shedding mass with every hour that passes. And as it moves through the inner solar system, every layer it loses tells us something about where it came from and how long it's been drifting through silence. Before it was even officially discovered, the TESS Space Telescope had already captured it by accident. Between May and June of 2025, data shows it crawling slowly across TESS's field of view. A tiny movement, nearly invisible. But when astronomers revisited that footage, they saw something unexpected. Its brightness was already climbing, rapidly, too rapidly. At a distance where most comets remain dormant, 3i Atlas was already glowing, emitting more light than models predicted. Not from sunlight reflected off solid rock, but from something deeper, from internal chemistry coming to life. That glow was traced to hypervolatiles, materials like molecular nitrogen and hydrogen, elements that boil off at incredibly low temperatures. This is unusual and revealing. Most comets start by releasing water vapor, but not this one. It started colder. It started older. When James Webb turned its eyes on 3i Atlas in August, it found a coma layered with irregularities, regions of gas that didn't match, suggesting uneven activity across the surface. Some zones were exploding, others remained quiet. This wasn't smooth. This was chaotic, volatile, fragmenting. Even more curious, some of the dust wasn't being pushed away from the sun. It was falling toward it. That goes against what we usually see, but not against physics. If CO2 is being ejected violently enough, or if the grains are tiny and irregular, they can be launched forward, sunward, carried by invisible forces in directions we don't expect. Then came the polarimetry. In September, a new kind of observation added another layer to the mystery. Polarimetry doesn't just look at light. It looks at how that light is vibrating, how it's been twisted, scattered, polarized by the dust it reflects off. The result? Something never seen before, a sharp, narrow band of negative polarization, a fingerprint that no comet in our solar system has ever shown, not once. That level of alignment suggests something strange about the dust grains in its coma. Maybe they're thinner, flatter, more crystalline. Maybe they formed in a colder place. Maybe they've been drifting longer than any of us can imagine. This behavior matches what we see in some distant objects far beyond Neptune, in the Kuiper Belt, in the scattered disk, in places we've barely begun to study. And yet, this one didn't stay there. It escaped. Now, it's passing through, leaving behind only the evidence of its disintegration, the trail of a slow unraveling, and astronomers are racing to capture every frame. In late August, Gemini South took one of the clearest images yet. The coma was vivid, the tail unmistakable, but what stood out most was a spectral spike in hydrogen cyanide, a familiar signature, but powerful. Calculations showed it was releasing trillions of molecules every second, not extraordinary by solar system standards, but enough to confirm active sublimation, enough to confirm a living comet. And yet, something felt off because the ratio of hydrogen cyanide to carbon chains was low, very low, just like Borisov. That suggests a pattern that maybe comets from interstellar space form under different rules, that their chemistry is shaped by older, colder histories, that they are, in some chemical sense, alien. Every measurement sharpens that picture, but also complicates it. 3i Atlas is like a puzzle with missing edges. We can't see the full shape, but we're starting to guess the picture. It's not just dust and gas. It's not just ice and light. 
It's a message, silent, drifting, burning, from a place we may never reach, a whisper from before the sun was born. Every comet has a breaking point. For 3i Atlas, that threshold is approaching fast. Its closest approach to the sun, the perihelion, is set for October 30th, just 1.4 astronomical units away. Not close enough to vaporize instantly, but enough to test its structure, to see if it was built to survive heat or destined to vanish in it. Interstellar comets are fragile. They're not solid monoliths. They're ancient rubble, porous, fractured, held together by cold and time. When sunlight hits them with full force, they don't just melt, they fracture, they fall apart. And some never make it past the sun. That's why this moment matters. Because right now, telescopes across the solar system are locked in, watching, waiting. Mars has already seen it. Earth, too. The Hubble and James Webb telescopes are set to observe it again. From the inner system, SOHO, a sentinel of solar activity, may capture its glow as it grazes the sun. Even further out, ESA's upcoming Euclid mission and NASA's SphereX may detect echoes in the infrared if it survives the burn. It's a coordinated watch, a cosmic stakeout, because if it disintegrates, if it sheds its outer shell in a final surge, it might reveal something purer underneath, deeper layers, untouched by cosmic radiation, older ices, primal chemistry, a glimpse into what the galaxy looked like before the sun had planets, before Earth had oceans, before time, as we know it, even mattered. But nothing is guaranteed. Some comets survive, some don't. Oumuamua barely showed any activity, then slipped away before we could understand it. Borisov fragmented slowly, dust by dust. And 3i Atlas? It's already behaving unpredictably. In early data, its brightness spiked fivefold, when it should have barely doubled. Its tail doesn't flow as expected. Its gases erupt unevenly, and its spectral fingerprints hint at chemistry shaped in freezing alien dark. That instability could be its undoing, or its greatest gift, because as it breaks, it speaks. Every fragment a sentence, every gas a clue. If it survives the perihelion, we'll see it again, not just as a fading comet, but as a changed one a stripped-down relic drifting back into the dark. And if it doesn't, then this, these weeks, these images, these spectra, will be all we ever get. The final testimony of something ancient, distant, and unknown. Either way, the silence is coming, and it will leave questions echoing long after the light fades. 3i Atlas won't stay. Its path curves out, not around. It isn't bound to the sun. No return. No second orbit, just one pass through the light, then back into cold silence. We may never see it again, but in this brief crossing, it told us things, not in words, in dust, in spectra, in whispers of light caught by machines orbiting two lonely worlds. It showed us carbon chains thinner than expected, gas jets that broke the rules, a tail that pointed the wrong way. It pulsed brighter than it should have, released compounds that defied the norms of comets born near our star. And it told us something else, something quieter, that even in a sky filled with ancient bodies, some are older than we can imagine. This object may have started its journey before our sun even existed, before there were planets, before there was Earth. And yet, by chance or fate, we saw it. We looked up and found it sliding between stars. Maybe that's the real story. Not just what 3i Atlas is, but what it reminds us of, that we're still learning what's out there, still blind to most of it, still missing what drifts in silence just beyond our reach. But sometimes, we catch a glimpse. If this story moved you, stay with us. Subscribe. Let the algorithms know these stories matter. Leave a like, share it, or simply remember, there's more drifting in the dark, and we'll be here, watching, always listening.